Well, here we are again. Uh, this is my little Ren tank engine. I've had this for oh, a very, very long time. Uh, it was actually the first brand new locomotive I ever got. I've actually still got the box. Uh, it's the only box I've got of any of my old locomotives. Uh, so it's the W2204 060 Tank Local LMS Maroon. Uh, and it was bought from Wonderland Models in Edinburgh. And it would have been back in the 70s anyway. But, uh, yeah. Um, this thing still goes, but, you know, it doesn't sound too clever. Um, and I, I think the magnet's pretty much done in it as well. So I tend not to run it too often. And it's a bit jittery around corners, especially. Um, but I had similar problems with my uh, Ivet class locomotive here. And... Uh, I'll just let you hear this run now. That's running nice and quietly now. So, we're going to do the same to this. We're going to see if we can get it running a bit quieter and a bit smoother. Let's go take it to bits. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, get the body off. Simple screw down the chimney. And it should just lift off. I have actually already serviced this when I took it out of my loft when I, you know, I started the hobby up again. I, I gave this a bit of a, a clean up and an oil, but um, it, it's not really been lubricated properly. And I think that's the main issue. It's, it's got this horrible grinding sound. Um, I also think there's absolutely no play in the the armature at all so I think the bearing's possibly a bit tight at the front. So we're going to give it a take it apart, give it a good clean and lubricate the hell out of it because really you know I've seen a lot of videos and a lot of instruction about lubrication for, for locomotives and certainly you don't want to over lubricate all your linkages and your chassis but th there are bits where you know you need to make sure it's lubricated and well lubricated. Um, and I think that's the main problem with this, it's just simply too dry. So, and the other thing is the magnet. Um, it's not bad. I know you're not supposed to take it out of these things, but you just have to sometimes. So I'm going to replace the magnet and I'm going to replace it with a neodymium. Now, I know that's a controversial thing in this hobby, uh, replacing these things with neodymium magnets. Um, I know they are very, very powerful magnets. I fully understand the, the argument about what it can you know, do to the motor um, and you know, the excess wear on the bearings. I'm not 100% convinced of that. Um, there's an awful lot of anecdotal evidence about that, but I've yet to really see um, anything really concrete, you know, really strongly evidence that the ne neodymiums really do damage the motors. Um, I'm not saying they don't, but I'm not entirely convinced they do either. So I'm kind of open-minded about it. But I do get that to replace that magnet with exactly the same magnet in neodymium form puts a hell of a strong magnet in there. Now, I've done it with my Ivet class and my Flying Scotsman, and they run absolutely fine. So, you know, I'm not against doing it, but these ones, you know, with a with little groove to go around the screw and the bearing in there, you know, they're about £10 each. Uh, now, you know, they're selling a lot cheaper than sending this off to be remagnetized. So I wasn't against buying it, but then I thought, well, actually, you know, what the hell? I'll get some little neodymiums and just put a couple in with some washers. So I've made a replacement magnet to go in. And uh, that is certainly stronger than the um, the uh, you know the old magnet, but not as strong as a neodymium direct replacement magnet would be. So I think I'm kind of compromising a little bit. Um, so magnet out and retired. Uh, let's just get into this and take it to bits. I'm just I'm just going to remove this bearing altogether. I really want to get the armature out. Yeah, there's no lubrication in there at all. Um, 
there may have been at some point. Here we go, it's the other bearing. And again, it looks bone dry. So I'm going to have a very close look at that bearing just to see what kind of wear is going on in there. I want to have a very close look at these bearings to see if there is wear. And yeah, there's wear right at the, the end. It's okay the sides, so I think this, this bearing has been too tight. And in this one, yeah, exactly the same thing. What's been happening is the bearing's been, you know, screwed in too tightly. And it's uh, where the, the end of the armature sits right in, you know, in the, the middle of the bearing. It's, it's caused quite a bit of wear. Um, just have a look at the ends of the armature. Yeah, it's kind of uh, ground itself down a little bit. Okay, so first of all, the usual process, we shall clean up the commutator with the old fiberglass pencil. I'll just use a pin to scrape out the the gaps between the poles, just in case there's any uh, crap in there. So just wiping off anything, any rubbish from the gear and the ends of the armature. So lubricating these bearings um, because. I'm pretty sure this is the source of most of the you know the horrible noise. It's just metal on metal grinding. Um, so oil, it it will work, but it won't last very long. So really, you want to get grease in, into those bearings. Um, and I wouldn't use ordinary grease, obviously, uh, but some silicone grease. I'm just using the you know the stuff you would use in the brakes in your car or something, and uh, it should work very nicely so let's just get some grease on the end of a cotton bud and i'm really going to you know fill this hole with grease same with this bit really work the the grease into the hole because you want that really well lubricated and uh, that's that uh, okay, so we can pop this back in. I really like working on these old engines. Um, you know, I when I opened up that uh, LNER tank engine that I got recently, you know, which was a much much newer locomotive, um, I I didn't really know what I was looking at to be perfectly honest with you. But I you know I've since learned that you don't really service those engines um, other than giving them a clean and a lubrication. The, the you know you can't really get into the armatures it's the, you know, the little Mabuchi motors that are pretty much sealed up um, and that's a real shame I think you know that takes a lot of the the fun away of uh, of working on these things uh, you know, it's not the same if I mean this to me is, is a big part of the hobby is, is you know taking these things apart fixing them maintaining them you know trying to get them to run quieter and better uh it's all part of the fun uh right okay so the motors the armature's back in position the bearings are in position so that's got too much play in it so i'm just gonna screw this bearing in a bit so i've set this bearing um to allow a tiny little bit of movement in the armature you know just half a millimeter or so if that um because we just i don't want it to be tight yeah so that should allow the motor to spin um with less friction and uh hopefully that'll uh, run a lot quieter so this is my uh make do replacement magnet which is just two little 10 millimeter ring uh, neodymiums separated by some 10 millimeter washers um the, the washers in the middle i've had to cut a chunk out of to you know to uh because of the bearing at the back of the, the plate there um and hopefully this will do the business so we'll plug it in and then we'll try and get the uh the bolt through it 
There we go. And see, that's strong enough to pick up the motor, but not massively strong. You know, it does drop off, so that's probably just about right strength-wise. So I don't think we're going to hit the magnet being too powerful problem. And actually, before I put the uh, the motor back onto the chassis, I'm going to lubricate the, the gear. Um, and that's just with the, the usual oil. But... You know, again, I'm being fairly liberal with it because you've got metal on metal. Um, you know, it doesn't do any harm to actually give that a, a good oil. Not too much, obviously, but not the little pinprick of oil that you would put on the linkages. So I can do that just now, actually. Just put a tiny wee drop on the linkages. Um, and ideally... I would really want to get lubrication into the chassis um, you know, where the axles go through the chassis and we can do that to some extent so that's us lubricated up yeah it's going I think it's just the, uh, the battery's a bit flat we're done Let's go and see how it goes. That's certainly a lot quieter. So as you can see in here, it's running an awful lot quieter uh, and just better generally. So excellent result. Um, I think the main reason it's quieter is because I greased those bearings. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on it as I will uh, with, with my Evit class. You know, I'll inspect them regularly because that amount of lubrication in the bearing, you know, it will liquefy to a certain extent and it will leak out. It shouldn't cause any problems, but I'll... Um, you know, I'll check them regularly to make sure that that uh, grease isn't getting anywhere it shouldn't. But, uh, yeah. See you later, folks.